Okay, so we've had several Raspberry Pi laptops and tablets in the past, but due to the size of the Raspberry Pi and the way that they stack the USBs and the Ethernet, they've all been a bit chunky. Now the Elecro gets over it by putting the Pi on the outside, which I think really works well, but uh, obviously for portability it's not the best. But the way you just attach this dock and then plug it in and then you get mouse and keyboard support and everything I think is just a really nice touch. The Raspad showed just how thick a tablet could be with the Raspberry Pi inside and so did the Crow Pi L, really quite a chunky device but again really, really cleverly thought out working with what you've got. Now obviously the Compute Module 4 uh, or 5, I've got one coming soon. I think probably lends itself best to a laptop because it's so incredibly small and it can work with custom boards and be inside and then you can have a nice Raspberry Pi laptop. But obviously recently we had the Raspberry Pi 500 which although it's not as slim as a Compute Module 4 because everything is all in one row it is quite a bit slimmer than a Raspberry Pi especially when it's out of its case. And I've just taken mine out and I've just created a casualty so this part is loose now. Oh dear. It would still work fine. So yeah, this is the, the board, uh, complete with GPIO pins, and it just is a lot shallower. If I try and get down to the same level, so just longer and thinner. So doesn't necessarily help uh, with this. So there's three points of connection. So there's the HDMI, there's the USB-C that powers the Pi, and then there's the USB which goes into here, into the USB 3, which does mouse and keyboard and also gives you the breakout connections here as well. So if I disconnect that, I'm going to need to do it with cables. So I plugged it all in, but it's obviously not going to help us anything. I mean, it is working or it can work from battery. I can unplug it and this has got a battery in it so it can power the device. Uh, but it's just booting up an operating system now. So this is Twister OS with the XP theme. And as you can see, the mouse and keyboard and everything is all working. Here we have a closer look. So basically I've got a USB-A to A cable, so that's for mouse and keyboard. I've got USB-C powering it, so that's powering it from the battery inside this lap dock. Uh, and also I've got a micro HDMI to mini HDMI going into here. But that's not as good as the official solution, uh, which works with the Raspberry Pi 5. Now it's not particularly suitable for the Raspad, so this has got a Raspberry Pi 5 in it even though it was designed for a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and Fido S is a brilliant operating system for a tablet, works really really well, nice and snappy. But the issue is, but the board is slightly longer than the tablet, so there's no way it's going to go in there. Again, check out the size of the computer module 4 or 5, that could be in really quite a small, like an iPad mini size tablet would be lovely. So my thought was to maybe bung it on the back of this 14 inch Ymaxit tablet. I've already got a Visa mount which I can put on there so I could attach it to it and use it with this tablet. As I say, size wise, you know, it's much bigger than the tablet. But overall thickness could be pretty slim. Well, at least compared to the Raspad. And this has just come through the door, which is a Chewy High 10 X1, which is a 10 inch N100 tablet, so I'll have a video on that soon. Now this display is really cool in the way that it can be powered via USB-C. So if I plug in USB-C, and uh, let's flip that up, pop it into the phone. You can see the monitor wakes up, I just need to agree to that. And we have touchscreen control. So if I tap on the top here, I can go to desktop mode. But unfortunately to this date, uh, Raspberry Pis don't support DisplayPort out, so you have to use the HDMI cable. Compute Module 5 will use different breakout boards. Is it possible to add DisplayPort to it? I don't know, but it would be nice to see it. And you can see this works like a laptop or a desktop and uh, goes full screen, but also Windows certain apps as well. So you can see YouTube, starts up full screen, but I can window it and move it around. So this is to see if it can actually be done. Now, the board itself needs to work with these connections. So I guess it's gonna be this way around. Oh, I can even just, I've got a screw point here. I could literally just screw into that. If I put a couple of bits of something underneath it to 
to keep the board away and lots of the board uh, hasn't got any circuitry on it. Yeah, so I don't even need that. Yeah, it might be worth still putting it in there. And look, this is why they put the uh, NVMe slot in here, so I've got holes to make my tablet. Okay, so some progress. Just need to screw in a couple of these. So unfortunately, I haven't got any of these with mini HDMI, which is a shame. So that means I'm going to have to use this cable. So HDMI in. Oh, is that long enough? Oh, I don't know if it is. Okay, so it fits. <laughs> nice and neat. Then USB-C and... Let's go around there a bit so it's a bit uh, within the tablet. And then I need power. Now there's possibly something clever I could do with Pi Sugar, uh, but Pi Sugar works on the GPIO pins touching on the Pi. So when you get a Pi 4 or a Pi 5, it actually mounts underneath and powers it through the GPIO pins. Now, obviously we can't do that because it's a different configuration. You could solder cables from here to here, but that's going to wreck things. Uh, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to use a massive cheat and I'm going to use one of these power banks. Uh, so I could attach this to the back of it, but it is very heavy. So power in here. And this will at least tell me how long it's going to last for as well as a tablet. So, oh, and then power into... Oh, I've done that wrong, am I? I've just realized I've done it wrong. So power is going to go into there and this needs to be USB A to C. So I need one of these. And we'll do it into USB 3. So that can go back in there. And then we power it up. Spin it around. I already saw the green light come on. It doesn't seem to power it from the Pi. Let's try that one. Okay, so that's not powering it enough. Oh, I'm not going to have to use my GPO adapter, am I? That would be a shame. So in here, I've got some not particularly safe devices. Not that one. This one. So GPIO pins. So let's spin that around. And so I'm guessing it's this way around. So it's going to be 5 volt on the outside. And then ground is the third one in, so let's just unplug this for now. So 5 volt on the outside and ground is going to be plugged into... I'm going to try it from the Pi, and I've actually got a micro USB to USB A. Because this has got C on it at the moment. Right, and then power to the Pi. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Come on, monitor. Oh, it's working, it's booting. Twister XP. And then if we tap the start, you can see that it's working. I maybe need more of a touch OS. So let's shut this down and use Android with it. I'm getting a ticking noise, which I'm a little bit worried about. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we could be worried about. It's not doing it now. I think it was how I was holding it and one of the cables touching another cable or something. I'm sure it's fine. So let's grab Android and plug in. Lights on, green. <laughs> so I'm touching the cables. It is only 5 volt. That's good how that monitor fix works. So there's not enough power just from the USB, but taking it from the GPIO pins, it's fine. It's definitely making a noise. I don't know what's making the noise though. Okay, so we have Android. And if I hold it like that, look, it looks like it's a tablet working on its own. So we have the first, as far as I know it, Raspberry Pi 500 tablet. So if I go across and I can launch, say, Google Play Store and all apps, files. So let's go with, is the keyboard going to come up? Ah, oh, it thinks, is it because it's a Pi 400? It thinks there's a keyboard. 
Yeah, that might be something I have to overcome. Okay, so I connected my keyboard in the end and ended up connecting it to the Wi-Fi. So if we tap on here, I've done a search for one of my videos and we can see that it's pretty responsive. I mean, it's, it's basically like a Pi 5 in there and you can see all of this is working. If I drag down, I've got all these sliders and things here that I can adjust. And if I go back up, go to all apps, I can open files. Uh, and let's go for gallery and Spotify. And then if I tap here, I can switch between all the open apps. It's a nice size, 14 inch as a touchscreen. And this is a really nice quality display. Um, but uh, yeah, not, not the greatest of tablets. The Wi-Fi definitely seems to be affected by being connected to an aluminium screen. The uh, heat is going to be a problem if you're going to use it for a long period of time. I think it stuttered then, which it shouldn't do at uh, this resolution. Uh, and also battery life. Well, this is a pretty chunky battery, but it's a big display. And what are we looking at? Around about 11 hours of battery life. So pretty good. And just to show the weird way that I had the tablet working, and I actually did this by accident because the doorbell rang a few times, I had loads of distractions, and uh, ended up basically going GPIO pins to USB. And I actually meant GPIO pins to go to the USB to power the monitor. I don't know why I did that, but as I say, I had a load of distractions at the time. So for some reason it worked. It did provide extra power. But if I unplug this from here, let's get rid of this one we don't need that either and I can put this back on uh, so this is basically USB-C to micro so that's how I meant to do it so GPIO pins are providing extra power to the monitor uh, which is what I was doing with the official Raspberry Pi monitor the other USB cable is working to transfer touch control and then obviously we just got the HDMI cable going in as well so that's how it should have been let's see if it's working yeah, and it's working in this configuration as well. So you can see that all the touchscreen and everything is working. Uh, the screen's not turning itself off. I can close down all the apps. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.